Experience the power of faith. Jesus, a beacon of hope, love, and forgiveness. His teachings timeless, his impact immeasurable. Uncover the story of Jesus, a journey unlike any other. Imagine a time when your past contributions to a nation are forgotten. What would it feel like? Let's journey back to a time when the family of Israel journeyed to Egypt. Led by Jacob, each member of his family entered Egypt, a land of promise and opportunity. Among them were Jacob's sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And let's not forget Joseph, who was already in Egypt, having been sold into slavery by his brothers. Over time, the Israelites grew in number, their families expanding to form a large and powerful nation. They spread throughout the land, their presence felt in every corner of the country. But with growth came visibility, and with visibility came fear. A new king rose to power in Egypt, a king who knew nothing of Joseph, who was oblivious to the past contributions of the Israelites to the prosperity of Egypt. The new king saw not allies, but a threat, a powerful nation that could potentially align with Egypt's enemies. This fear led him to devise a plan, a plan to control the Israelites and limit their growth. The Egyptians enslaved the Israelites, forcing them to build cities and work in the fields. They were made to do hard labor, constructing cities like Pithom and Ramesses for the king, Pharaoh, where he could store food for his people. The more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites grew in number, their resilience shining through their hardship. However, this growth only heightened the Egyptians' fear, leading them to impose more work, more hardship on the Israelites. They made them toil without rest, their lives marked by the harsh reality of slavery. They were forced to build houses with bricks and mortar and to labor in the fields all under the watchful eyes of their Egyptian masters. Thus began a period of hardship and servitude for the Israelites, a people once welcomed into Egypt. What happens when fear drives a nation's decisions? Imagine being an Israelite in ancient Egypt. The land that was once a place of refuge for your ancestors is now the scene of your enslavement. Your people are forced to labor under the sweltering sun, building cities for a pharaoh who views you as less than human. Pithom and Ramesses, these are the names of the cities that rise from your blood, sweat, and tears. The work is grueling. It's not just the physical labor, but the emotional and psychological toll it takes on you. You're building monuments, not for your glory, but for the glory of the king who oppresses you. You're laying bricks, mixing mortar, toiling in the fields. Every day is a reminder of your bondage, but in the midst of the hardship, something remarkable happens. Your people, the Israelites, continue to grow in number. There's a resilience in your spirit, a determination to survive, to thrive even. You have children, you build families, you hold on to hope. You're not just surviving, you're multiplying. And with every new child born, every new family formed, fear grows among the Egyptians. They see your growing numbers, not as a testament to your resilience, but as a threat to their power. Their fear blinds them to your humanity, hardens their hearts to your suffering, they respond to your growth, not with compassion, but with even harsher oppression. The Egyptians force you to work without rest. They increase your burdens, making your already difficult lives even more unbearable. But despite this, you continue to grow, to multiply. You continue to hope, to dream, to resist. The Israelites, despite their harsh conditions, continued to multiply, causing even more fear among the Egyptians. Your story is a testament to the power of resilience, the strength of hope, and the indomitable spirit of a people who refuse to be broken. What would you do if you were commanded to commit an unthinkable act? This was the grim reality that faced two Israelite midwives, Shifra and Pua. They were thrown into a moral quagmire when a cruel decree was issued by the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The decree was nothing short of a death sentence for every newborn Israelite boy. This was a desperate and ruthless attempt by the Pharaoh to control the burgeoning Israelite population, which he perceived as a threat to his kingdom. Now, imagine the dilemma faced by Shifra and Pua. They were not warriors or political leaders. They were midwives, women whose job was to bring life into the world, not to take it away. But here they were, ordered by the most powerful man in the land to become agents of death. Yet, in the face of this unthinkable command, Shifra and Pua chose to defy the king. Their respect for God and the sanctity of life 
outweighed any fear of earthly power. They refused to carry out the king's cruel decree, choosing instead to let the boys live. When summoned before the pharaoh to explain their actions, they gave a clever excuse. They claimed that the Israelite women were very strong and gave birth before they could arrive. Their excuse not only saved their own lives, but also protected the lives of many innocent children. Their obedience to God, their respect for life, and their bravery in the face of tyranny did not go unnoticed or unrewarded. God blessed Shifra and Pua for their faith and courage. He ensured they thrived and had families of their own. Their story serves as a powerful testament to the idea that faith and respect for life can prevail even under the harshest of circumstances. In the face of a cruel command, faith and respect for life prevailed. And so the story of Shifra and Pua, two ordinary women who made an extraordinary choice, continues to inspire and remind us of the power of faith, courage, and the sanctity of life. Now let us pray, Lord God, we praise you that you are fully in control of all things. I pray you would protect the children, keep them healthy, and help them to thrive. I thank you that you know every hair on their head. Amen. What lengths would you go to save a life? Imagine, if you will, a command so cruel, so unthinkable, that it rocks the very core of a community. This is the fear that gripped the Israelites in Egypt when Pharaoh decreed that all newborn Israelite boys were to be drowned in the River Nile. Imagine the mothers, their hearts heavy with dread, knowing that their sons, their tiny, innocent newborns, were marked for death simply because of their heritage. Imagine the fathers, powerless to protect their own flesh and blood, their dreams for their sons, shattered even before they could take shape. The fear, the desperation that seeped into the very marrow of the Israelite community was palpable. This was not just an attack on the physical bodies of the Israelites, this was an attack on their very spirit, their hope, their future. Pharaoh's command was not merely about controlling the growing Israelite population, it was about breaking their will, about instilling such fear and despair that they would be too broken, too demoralized to resist. Yet, in the face of such unimaginable horror, the Israelites found the strength to persevere. They found the courage to hope, to dream of a future where their children could live in peace, free from the fear of a cruel and unjust death. And it is in this context, in this time of desperation and fear, that we find the seeds of a story that would change the course of history. For amidst the cries of anguish and the whispers of despair, a glimmer of hope was about to be born, a hope that would take the form of a tiny baby hidden away from the prying eyes of a cruel pharaoh, a baby who would grow up to lead his people out of bondage and into freedom. Amid such despair and fear, a glimmer of hope was about to be born. What if the hope of an entire nation was born under the most desperate circumstances? Imagine a time of great despair, when the Israelites were subjected to the cruel whims of a pharaoh who feared their strength and numbers. It was during this time, under the looming threat of a brutal decree, that a baby boy was born to an Israelite couple from the family of Levi. This was no ordinary child, but the future liberator of the Israelites, Moses. His birth was a clandestine affair shrouded in secrecy and fear. His parents knew the danger that awaited him if his existence was discovered. The Pharaoh's decree was clear and ruthless. Every newborn Israelite boy was to be cast into the River Nile. But they also knew deep in their hearts that their son was special, that he was destined for great things. Moses' mother, with a heart heavy with fear but filled with hope, hid him away for three months. Every cry, every whimper was a potential alarm bell that could spell doom for the baby. But their faith in God and the belief in a brighter future for their child and their people gave them the courage to defy the Pharaoh's orders. When it was no longer possible to keep Moses hidden, his mother took a desperate measure. She placed him in a basket and set him afloat on the River Nile, entrusting his fate to God. The river, once a symbol of death for the Israelite infants, now became the path to Moses' extraordinary destiny. In the darkest of times, when oppression was at its peak, a beacon of hope emerged. Moses, born under the most desperate circumstances, was destined to rise above them all, to liberate his people from the shackles of slavery. His birth set the stage for one of the most extraordinary stories of faith and liberation in history. 
In the darkest times, a beacon of hope emerged, setting the stage for one of the most extraordinary stories of faith and liberation in history. I will sing to the Lord, for He is highly exalted. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise Him. My Father's God, and I will exalt Him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is His name. He will reign forever and ever. Oh, the Lord, our strength and song, highest praise to Him be. Christ the Lord, our conquering King, your name we raise, your triumph sing. Oh, praise the Lord, our mighty warrior. Praise the Lord, the glorious one. By his hand we stand in victory. By his name we've overcome.
What can we learn from the early chapters of Exodus? As we delve into the pages of the Exodus, we encounter a narrative filled with profound wisdom and timeless lessons. Our journey begins with the descent of Jacob's family into Egypt, a land foreign and unfamiliar. The Israelites, initially a small clan, burgeon into a populous nation, a testament to the divine promise made to Jacob. This rapid growth, however, alarms the new Pharaoh, who, ignorant of Joseph's contributions, perceives them as a threat. Thus, a life of harsh servitude is imposed upon the Israelites, marking the beginning of their trials. In the midst of this grim chapter, we are introduced to two courageous women, Shipra and Pua. Despite the Pharaoh's cruel decree to kill newborn Israelite boys, these midwives choose faith and obedience to God over fear. Their audacious act of defiance not only safeguards the lives of innocent children, but also earns them God's favor, further strengthening the Israelites. The narrative of Exodus implores us to reflect on the themes of faith, obedience, and hope in times of despair. Faith as embodied by the midwives is not merely belief, but a call to action. It is the audacity to defy unjust decrees, the courage to stand against oppression, and the strength to persist in the face of adversity. Obedience to God, as demonstrated by Shifra and Pua, is not a passive submission, but an active affirmation of divine wisdom over human authority. And hope, as experienced by the Israelites, is not an abstract concept, but a tangible force that propels a nation towards liberation. What does this mean for us today? As we navigate the trials and tribulations of our own lives, may we draw strength from the resilience of the Israelites, the courage of Shifra and Pua, and the enduring promise of hope. May we too choose faith over fear, obedience over defiance, and hope over despair. In the trials of the Israelites, we find a story of resilience and faith that continues to inspire us today. Now, let us end today's sermon in prayer. Our Lord in heaven, we ask that you protect families, children, and civilians in all of the world, and ask that you comfort and strengthen your people, and to help those impacted by war to find healing and hope in the midst of the devastation around the world today. Amen. And now, dear friends, as we bask in the afterglow of this prayer, I want to encourage you to keep the flame of faith burning. How can you do that? By staying connected with us here at Big Jim Country Boy. We constantly strive to bring you words of spiritual nourishment and encouragement. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. But don't stop there. Click on the bell icon and select all notifications. This ensures that you won't miss out on any of our sermons. We share a new sermon every Sunday, a fresh word from God to start your week off right. It's a wonderful way to keep your spiritual life vibrant and growing. And remember, when you subscribe and click the bell, you're not just benefiting yourself. You're also helping to spread God's word to others. But this isn't just about passively receiving. We invite you to be an active participant in this spiritual journey. Engage with our content. Share your thoughts and reflections in the comments. Pass the videos along to friends and loved ones who might need a word of encouragement. And if you've appreciated this sermon, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a simple act but it can make a big difference. It helps our content reach more people and it lets us know that our work is resonating with you. Your support means the world to us. It's what keeps us going and it's what enables us to continue bringing the life-changing message of God's word to you and to the world. Remember, God's word is a treasure chest of spiritual gems. Keep exploring, keep discovering. Until next time, stay blessed.